God that we're so grateful for in this one evening. I've got dressed up with my my cocktail dress, my 6 inch heels, hair all dolled up. I'm ready to go to one of my events. Literally, I promise you, two blocks away from my home. Literally, just up the street from where I stay and where I live. <coughs> and uh, I told them, you know what? It's fine. I I'm just gonna meet you guys there. You're gonna be something for I'm gonna drive myself there. Got a car to drive. It's fine. Like, I'm just gonna. I'll meet you there. It's fine. So um, I drove to this event was like at the shopping center. Uh, one of the stores in the shopping center. I drove there and um, I stopped at a red traffic light. I was about three cars from the front of the traffic light. And as I stopped there, I felt so uneasy. Like it was, let me put this into context, it was half past five in the afternoon, it was broad daylight, 7th of June, and it's, I mean, like it's home time. Like people are catching taxis and cabs and people are walking home, and it's a busy time of day, right? There's lots of cars, bumper to bumper traffic. So lots of people around me. Stopped at the traffic light. Um, there was a barrier on the left hand side of me because I wanted to turn left. So that we were driving on the left hand side of the road. So I sit on the right hand side. And um, I spotted four men on my left hand side. And they were just looking really dodgy. And my instinct just told me that something is not right. And I knew that if they were coming for me, that there has to be somebody on my side of the car, right? So I looked over to my right hand side, I spotted a guy about three lanes away from me. He looked me straight in my eye, and so I walked towards me. And at that moment, I knew that something's wrong, something's wrong. And I knew that if these men are coming to me, for whatever reason, if it's to smash and grab my handbag out of my car, if it's, I, don't, I knew they weren't just going to be begging for money and trying to sell me something. I knew that in my heart. Don't get me wrong, I was still praying that they were just asking for money or that they were just trying to sell me something or whatever. But in my life, I knew. In my gut, I knew something was up. So what I did was, I took some steps, some like precaution. I took off my safety belt, I put my handbrake up, I put my car into neutral because I knew they were coming for me. I want to get away from the situation as quick as possible. I don't want to be hanging around there for whatever reason. I want to get away. I want to be in their company. They were my friends, right? And I already knew like they, they don't. This isn't feeling right. So um, I just looked in front of me. I tried not to make eye contact. I tried to be as tough as I could. Try not to show that I'm scared. Although I was horrified. I was alone in my car. Um, I had my phone with me, but I mean it's not like I, I don't know what was going to happen. So I think I just get out of the car and run away. I'm not going to just get out of the car and run away, right? So I was sitting there, felt like three hours, but it was probably 20 seconds just waiting for to see what was going to happen. And um, I waited. The next moment, they all surrounded my car. The four men on my left-hand side surrounded my car. And the man from the right-hand side approached me. And um, he knocked on my window. I ignored it because I was hoping that he's just trying to say hi, although I knew he wasn't. He knocked on my window and I ignored it. I just looked to the front and didn't make eye contact. And the second time he knocked, he knocked with a handgun, with a weapon. I looked to my left and three of the other four men, um, or two of the other four men also had weapons that I could see. And within two seconds I had three weapons pointing to my head. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been in a situation like that. If you have, I have inner sympathy for you. Um, it's the worst feeling in the world. It's not something that I wish upon any, any, anybody. Um, especially if you don't put yourself in that situation, which I believe nobody puts themselves in a situation like that. I um, immediately surrendered. I put my hands up. I just looked down. I didn't want to make eye contact. I didn't want to upset them even more for them to you know, do something out of um, being nervous. Um, I, I took the three portions so I could just open my door and get out because I've already taken off my safety belt. I got out of the car, just unlocked my door. I got out of the car and um, next moment this guy was searching me for phones, for keys, for whatever. I mean, it's horrible having a stranger touch you, search you. Um, it's horrible. Like, no, your dignity feels so 
demolish in that, in that moment as a woman, you know, a stranger. And I didn't have anything on me, everything was in my little handbag that I was taking to my event. And um, when I, I expected him to search me because that was what I was taught, so I kind of expected that that would happen. And um, I didn't find anything, so I thought, okay, good, I can run, you know, there's nothing he found, he wants the car, he wants my I was just screaming, take everything, just leave me alone. And in that moment, after he didn't find anything but my phone, he grabbed me and shoved me back into the car, um, pushing me over to the passenger seat, like telling me, get in, you're going with me, uh, with us. And at that moment, that is where I drew the line. Because ladies and gentlemen, I can guarantee you today that Going to the second destination will not get better than the first. Whatever they do, willing to do to you on a big street with hundreds of cars, hundreds of people around you, I can guarantee you it's not going to get better somewhere downtown with 10 other of their friends. And in that moment, I drew that line and I said, no, <coughs> I'm not going with you. I managed to somehow pull myself back up, thank goodness for adrenaline, and my heavenly brother gave me some sort of strength. I managed to pull myself back up. And I knew that I had to create a window of opportunity for myself because I need to get away. I punched the guy in his throat. He has this little fist, these little arms. <laughs> punched that guy in his throat and it gave me a split second to run away. It gave me that little opportunity to push him off me and to get out of that car and to run away. And that is what I did. I ran away, I ran into the cars, um, and luckily I think the lights must have just turned green because the cars were moving slowly. I ran up a big avenue, it's like, you know, four or five lanes, um, in my six inch heels, so bring it on the same bolt. <laughs> um, you can do anything men can in heels, right ladies? <laughs> I ran up that street, but you know what was the worst part out of everything that happened five seconds prior? Not one person would stop me. I was banging on 30, 40 car windows wow. and not one. And girls, I was wearing a pretty dress, okay? <laughs> like really. I wasn't wearing the sash, but I was wearing a pretty dress. And nobody would stop me. Not families, not males, not Nobody, I felt so helpless. I was there in the middle of traffic all by myself. I remember looking back and trying to see if they're chasing me, trying to see if they're aiming to shoot me. And thank goodness they weren't, they were trying to get into the car. Um, and eventually, and this is a very important part for me, eventually a young woman, um, younger than me, she was about 20 years old, she stopped and she helped me. And she was my angel that day. She, she took me to safety. She helped me. Um, luckily, I have a great support system back home. But I know that there's a lot of people that don't have that. And um, I was so grateful for her that you know she opened her heart. She opened her. She you know put herself in a dangerous position to help me. Um, and I knew all these things because do you know what is so funny? Three months prior to the Sparjack incident, I did a woman empowerment course with the organization in South Africa that taught me to punch somebody in the throat. That taught me to create windows of opportunity to my, for myself. That taught me to think about situations. That taught me to be aware of my surroundings at all times. That taught me not to place myself in difficult situations. That organization taught me to trust my gut and to trust my instinct. And when I was sitting in that car and I spotted these men, I trusted my gut and I knew something was up. So mainly, I had like a few seconds to prepare for whatever is going to happen. And to kind of expect the worst. And I did. And thankfully, I, I had that few seconds to just prepare myself to not be pulled off guard. And um, I, I, I honestly believe that that saved my life, that that got me out of that situation. That organization taught me not to go to the second destination. Um, I, I want to be very clear, I'm not the expert.
here and I'm just here today to share my story and my experience with you ladies and um, hopefully to inspire you and to motivate you to let you know that you have a choice. I had a choice. We, ha we always have a choice. We can choose to, fly, to, to fight, to fight, or to freeze, right? We essentially all have that choice. Um, and that is why I'm partnered with um, these amazing athletes and with the UFC, um, because I'm not the expert. I'm going to be teaching you how to punch somebody in the throat because I'm not the expert in that. But a expert taught me that lesson, and I was able to apply that, and I was able to get myself out of that situation. So I'd love to introduce Jason to you guys. kind of wave at him to get him off and now I want more time. I want to buy myself more time. Like what Debbie did, she struck the guys in the throat and it fight hold the punch correctly like we just all learned and I hit him in the throat. Doesn't have to be hard. Hit him in the throat. Now he has to address that situation. Now I have time for me to get out. Yeah. So I, I turn him out and, and try to find help.